Hello, namaste. Let me get over here to where I can queue up this question. Thanks so much for clarifying. Could you also please explain how to differentiate between patients facing psychiatric problems due to Kundalini awakening and those dealing with mental issues due to organic genetic causes? Okay, why are Kundalini experiences different? Well, different than what? <laughs> I don't know exactly what you're asking. Why are they different? I know of a person whose epilepsy got cured after awakening, brought bliss in her life, and others who have tough time, illness, anxiety attacks, hell realm before grace descends. Is it linked to past karma, whether journey will be rough or smooth? Well, okay. Whether the journey is rough or smooth depends on your ability to surrender in the midst of it, your ability to look at what's coming up. You know, Kundalini is there and it's going to bring up all the mud first. First you transition through the mud. How much mud do you have in your life? How many things, how many fears, how many dramas, how many things, you know, illusions are you carrying? How attached are you to Maya? Okay. So, I mean, all of those things go into, so there's no one blanket answer for that. I know people want everything to come in a, some kind of a categorized book that you can make it. It's exactly like this, exactly like that. Well, everybody's different. Everybody's had lifetimes, lifetimes, lifetimes of experiences, okay? Some are able to surrender in the midst of it. Some want to fight and kick the whole way. Okay. So again, there is no blanket, blanket answer as to why it's more difficult for some and why it's not for others. You know, why is it? So uh, again, now, as far as the mental health issues, look, if you had this the problem before Kundalini, then obviously it's an organic one. It has nothing to do with it. Okay. Uh, people in the midst of Kundalini can go off. They can go into a psychosis. This is why you really need to have a guru that understands what it is that can help to guide and direct you through it when you start getting to all those issues. Because like I said, so many things come up. You have dreams, you have visions, you have, you know, in the midst of the day, things that can seem very real uh, that are taking place. So again, it's, it's the same thing. It's not easy always to tell the difference, okay, between what's organic and, and what's not. There are so many diagnoses now uh, in the psychology realms. And even those things that are supposed to be organic, some of those things uh, one can transition through as well. You can come out of it. So, again, I mean, I wish I could give you a blanket, really easy answer to this, but there's just simply not. The main thing is when Kundalini awakenings, you really need to stay in balance because if you start mixing practices, and this is what I've told people before, do not mix practices, okay? Don't be mixing a lot of things when you have Kundalini awakening, okay? Because you can go off into a psychosis if you're mixing energetic practices and they're fighting with each other you know, uh, those types of things can happen. I knew one person told them, do not mix things. And they were listening to binaural beats as well as doing other energetic practices. And they went through a psychotic break. You can't do that. There's reasons, there are cautions in all the scriptures when you are dealing with kundalini it says it can lead to madness and death you need to know what you're doing you need to follow prescribed practices 
and not go off uh, and, and start implementing a bunch of other things because it can really throw you off balance. Same thing, you need to know what type of pranayam to do. If you do the wrong type, you can get too much in one channel and again, you get so off balance that you're pulled out into some drama, okay? Again, people doing third eye meditations. I've seen some run across people that have been doing that and they got so lost in astral realms they didn't know what was fantasy and what was real any longer and very ungrounded. Got into fear mode, started becoming paranoid. I mean, so many things can happen. So again, it's not a, a simple question. It's what makes you think it's less devastating if it's a Kundalini, if you go off on a psychosis because you are mixing things that shouldn't be mixed. It's still a psychosis, okay? Okay. Doesn't mean that because uh, things are coming up, like I said, you have, um, you'll have all of the negative energy, those things coming, doesn't mean that one is in a, a mental illness, okay? When you can see it and you see the reality of what's taking place, you stay grounded and you see a reality, you're not in a mental illness, okay? So anyway, I hope this has helped to um, dispel some of that. Uh, but again, anytime you're dealing with psychology and things, there's a lot that goes in with it, okay? This is why I said, you know, it, it depends. A guru stays in touch with you because I want to know your dreams, what's coming through. You can tell from the dream material where they are in consciousness, where they are in their journey. Many times there are many clues which say uh, exactly where one is, okay? Especially when they have Kundalini awakenings. There are things that will come up that are um, typical on a journey, okay? So um, I'll leave it there. there. There are other things, you know, there are practices, things that I've put into motion that some psychologists that I know have used with great success. I have techniques that I have worked with people with that can bring very good success with getting them out of psychological uh, problems, okay? Um, exactly how to do that, I don't put that out online, but yes, I used to do counseling and I have, like I said, I've had some psychologists that have used it. I've had, um, People use it in Europe with drug treatment programs. When they were using my methodology, they had great success until they started, <laughs> decided it was good to bring in drugs with it. <laughs> of course, then I went right straight bottom down. But as long as they were using my methodologies, they were having a lot of success. And in fact, they were getting interviewed as to why are you having such great success with things, okay? Okay, <laughs> I had another psychologist that were using a lot of my methodologies. He wouldn't give credit here. He wanted to give credit somewhere else, you know. And then again, he bought him out because he wasn't honoring what was given where it was given. Okay, you can't, can't do that. It's not a smart thing to do. Anyway, I'll leave that here. But there are other, again, methodologies that you can use that can um, unveil what's going on in the subconscious realm, and then you can start to move people, move people forward out of that, okay? You can start to challenge that and move them forward. So I will leave this here. Namaste. Have a great day. Bye.